Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. We've heard about a lot of different COVID-19 scams, but this one, unlike any other we've heard about before, I have an important safety warning coming up from the FBI. Also, a Metro Detroit couple believes discrimination stopped them from their home of their dreams, and now they're headed to court. But first, a dispute leads to chaos at a Spirit Airlines terminal over the weekend. A disagreement over luggage turns violent at Metro Airport Sunday. This happened as Spirit Airlines employees were trying to board passengers for a flight to Atlanta. Jason Colthorpe following this story, and uh, Jason's been learning uh, there were injuries and arrests in the attack. Yeah, Devin, two arrests we've learned now and two injuries to Spirit employees, one of whom had to actually go to the hospital and all of this over carry on luggage. Ooh. An argument at gate D15 Sunday at Metro Airport escalates to pushing and shoving and moments later, what looks like an all out brawl. But a brawl would suggest there was fighting on both sides. Spirit Airlines saying tonight its employees were not fighting. They were attacked without provocation. According to Spirit, agents were trying to verify if some bags were too big to carry on. But the passengers tried to board anyway. One man yanking the door back open as employees tried to close it. I spoke to that employee who blocked the door when things got physical. He says he was poked in the eye and punched in the face, and his partner, who ended up under a pile of people, was hurt even worse and had to go to the hospital. The confrontation also featured several people unmasked and a woman holding a baby. Where is the baby? A passenger who shot this video is clearly worried, but it appeared someone pulled the baby away just before those two passengers tackled the spirit employee to the ground. The attack lasted about two minutes before airport police showed up and arrested two passengers and cited a third. That video just absolutely amazing and wild to watch. Uh, Spirit, by the way, telling us tonight this kind of behavior is unacceptable. It will not stand for that. It has banned all of those passengers who were involved from flying on Spirit anytime into the near future, permanently, I should say. Devin? That looked insane. Do we, do we know where these passengers are from? Uh, Detroit, Atlanta, anywhere? I've been talking to the uh, airport about this. We do not know at this point, but uh, we're waiting to get our hands on the police report. Yeah. We do expect the people that were arrested to be arraigned tomorrow. We're going to learn a lot more about them then, so stay tuned. But just wow. Yeah, Devin. exactly right. All right, Jason. Well, 21,000 troops currently in our nation's capital screened by the FBI to prevent against any insider threats. All National Guard troops deployed to D.C. have to go through additional layers of screening leading up to Wednesday's inauguration for President-elect Joe Biden. The screenings come as Capitol Police put the building on lockdown this morning after smoke from a homeless encampment. The Secret Service says there was no threat to the public and the Capitol Hill campus was never in danger. Meanwhile, a mock motorcade went through parts of Washington, D.C., preparing for the inaugural parade. Closer to home, if you've driven around Metro Detroit recently, you've likely seen the billboards asking for tips in finding anyone involved in the violence at the Capitol. The FBI reports it has made more than 100 arrests in a nationwide manhunt. It's been using social media pictures and videos to try to find their suspects. The FBI tells us it has put up the billboards to try to reach as many people as possible, including those who may not be social media users. We're just asking for people who may recognize a friend or a neighbor or a coworker um, who may have been um, involved in the violence to reach out to us and um, send us those tips so we, that we can track them down. For those a little more tech savvy, the FBI though is also running pictures of its suspects uh, on its website. Two seniors are dead after a house explosion rocks a Detroit neighborhood. It happened around 2 this afternoon on Tracy Street near 8 Mile and Schaefer. Firefighters say the victims were found in the back bedroom of the home. We're told one of the victims was 78 years old and the other was in their 60s. The fire chief says uh, by the time crews made it to the home, it was too late. The back section where the individuals were found was fully, fully involved, so there was no way we could have rescued. The guys tried. We went in and made a fast attack. 
two lines going in. I even had my truck crew going in, call for extra companies in which to necessitate uh, safety for our RIC team. Um, the guys tried, but there was nothing we could do. Investigators are working to determine what led up to that explosion. All right, let's get a check of the holiday weather today. Yeah, Ben joins us with uh, what appears to be a little bit more snow in the forecast. Little is the operative word here. You got it, Kim <laughs> and Devin. Just a little bit more than what we were seeing earlier today. Still looking at very little, if any, accumulation. Definitely under an inch if we see it. But Storm Tracker 4 now starting to paint most of the area in at least a lighter shade of blue. But you can see there are some darker shades in there, indicating at least some moderate snow showers. And even though it looks like that snow is cutting off there, uh, just off to our west, it's actually in between radar sites, and this looks like a continuous push of moisture coming in off of Lake Michigan. So we are expecting these snow showers to continue at least through the late evening hours tonight. I think by midnight we'll be all wrapped up, but temperatures not going much of anywhere. Going to be staying in the low 30s, and we've got more chances of snow tomorrow. In fact, multiple chances this week with one mild day to look forward to. And we'll check that out for you in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben. Now let's get the latest on the coronavirus. Wayne County Public Health announcing it is transitioning to the Moderna vaccine. This comes as officials say the county's doses of the Pfizer vaccine has run out. Wayne County will receive 5,500 doses of Moderna's vaccine tomorrow. The change only affects new first dose participants in the phase 1A and 1B. Uh, sections. We're told people waiting on their second Pfizer dose will still receive it. Meanwhile, the state reports 2,843 new cases and 20 additional deaths. And remember, that is a two day total for Sunday and Monday. Tonight, a Help Me Hank scam alert as the FBI puts out a warning to protect you from scammers preying on fears from the pandemic. We have seen uh, fake COVID-19 test kits, uh, now fakes of the vaccine itself being sold online. Here's our consumer. This new COVID-19 scam is a real shocker because this one could really cause harm. It could negatively impact your health, and unfortunately, some people desperate to get the vaccine, they're falling for it. We've tracked so many COVID-19 related scams since the pandemic started last year, but this one takes the cake. Online right now, people trying to sell what appears to be the vaccine. It is not legit. It could harm you. And these thieves are trying to steal your identity. Pay attention to where their um, offers for the COVID vaccine are coming from. So if you get an unsolicited text message or email, those are all things that should throw up red flags for you. The FBI Detroit office has been working to track all the different scams affecting Metro Detroiters. And this one especially concerning. If you have questions about the vaccine, don't hop online and talk to a stranger. Talk to your doctor. If you have questions about a vaccine that's been offered to you, it's always best to check with your preferred health care provider. Um, call them, uh, message them however you normally get in contact, and find out what the facts are. Scammers have been preying on seniors, trying to get their attention, working to get their money and their personal information. It's likely, unfortunately, not going to stop, which is why you need to be cautious. What they're really looking to do is get your personal information and or potentially your credit card information. Stay away from it. All they're doing is trying to collect information. And I have much more information regarding this particular scam and all the different COVID-19 related scams that I've been tracking since the pandemic started. They're all on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank. Today, the nation pauses to honor the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream. That my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. That's an excerpt from Dr. King's powerful speech in 1963 at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. There will be no events at the MLK Memorial this year because the mall is being closed. Meanwhile, though, here at home, the pandemic forced Triumph Church out of the Fox Theater for its annual MLK Day event, but organizers found another way to celebrate. 
As Victor Williams shows us, more than a thousand cars lined up for one of the largest outdoor MLK prayer breakfasts ever. Even though this year they had to find a new location other than the Fox Theater, Triumph Church has found a way to make sure all of these people can still honor the late MLK. I have a dream today. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a chance. What we are doing today is reminding the people that we have a responsibility to keep the dream alive. In a service held inside the church, but simulcasted on three huge LED screens, 800 cars were able to tune in via the FM dial. We haven't gotten there all the way, but this proves that there's an effort for us to try to get there. It was a ceremony consisting of singing poems and words from the guest speaker, Henry Ford Healthcare CEO Wright Lassiter III. It's really important to me that we celebrate the life of um, an amazing individual who did so much for this country. Aside from just a word about the messages and principles of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., there was also a food giveaway for families in need. The Triumph Church is not just a church that believes in worship. We're also a church that believes in doing the work. He's done nothing but great things. He's been feeding our family. He gives me food. He's awesome. I love him. Each car also received a $50 gift as well. You come here, you get the bread, you get the word, and you get a little money. Because the dream didn't just belong to Dr. King, it belonged to all the people of God. Quite clearly, the dream is still very much alive. Victor Williams. Local four. What a blessing for so many. And at this point, of course, it's unclear if next year's MLK service will return to the Fox Theater. It all, of course, depends on where we are in the pandemic. Yes. Well, still to come, uh, they believe race kept them from the home of their dreams. New at six. Now a Metro Detroit family says they're heading to court. But first, another shakeup by new Washtenaw County Prosecutor Eli Savitt will tell you about the latest policy change in his office when we come back.